Okay, so this is going to be our first lesson on Lagrangian mechanics. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the principle of least action. So the central concept to the Lagrangian mechanics is the formulation of the principle of least action. And what it says is that given two endpoints along the trajectory of any body or particle in space, what you're going to have is you're going to have a multitude of different possible paths that the particle or body can follow. So naturally, the particle, because of energy minimization, the particle or the body will choose the path of that requires the least action. And the action is just the physical quantity that we define as just how much energy or work is being done but it's not really an energy quantity it's more like a viral, virtual quantity that we formulate in order to uh, specify what this is so Lagrangian mechanics comes from the principle of least action which is in itself part of um, calculus of variations which deals with the optimization of functions and problems so the idea is that we're going to find a way to exp to essentially minimize the action, essentially make the, the change in the action equal to zero by satisfying a specific set of equations. So the first thing we need to talk about is the Lagrangian itself. So you will notice that you have this quantity L here, which is the, the difference between T and V. So T is the kinetic energy of the system, V is the potential energy. And you might think, well, is the Lagrangian the total energy? Well, no, because the total energy would actually be the sum of both quantities. So the Lagrangian is just the, the difference between the two. And you will find out that there are cases in which the potential can actually be negative. So that implies that this becomes a plus sign. And those are things that we will deal with later on. Now, the Lagrangian in itself is a function of both position and velocity. And it is sometimes expressed in terms of position, velocity, and also time. But the time doesn't really play a major role because time is essentially part of displacement and velocity anyway. So it is kind of implicit that it is already contained within those two variables. So now we define the action as just the integral of the Lagrangian between two endpoints. So if I grab an endpoint in time here and then another endpoint here, then the action is characterized by the area underneath that curve given some Lagrangian kind of function. And the Lagrangian is in itself related to the kinetic and potential energies of the system. Now, in order to minimize the action, we need to take an infinitesimal quantity of the action and make it equal to zero. So this delta here really just stands for infinitesimal. So we can minimize this by essentially just taking the the infinitesimal quantity of the Lagrangian and you'll find that the reason we can do this is because you will remember that you can pretty much just change the order um, you can place a derivative inside the integral and vice versa it's pretty much a very standard kind of thing that you do in calculus so this is the same as saying integral of the derivative with respect to t of f so this is basically where this comes from. You're taking an infinitesimal quantity here and that translates inside the integral to this function. Okay, so far so good. So how do we know which path the particle is going to take? Well, here's where we do a little bit of mathematical derivation. So recall that the total differential of a function of several variables is defined as follows. So we're going to take the partial derivatives with respect to each of the variables, and then we're going to multiply them by a, some infinitesimal quantity with respect to that variable. So if the function has three variables, we do it three times. If it has four, we do it four times, and so on. Now we're going to apply the same kind of reasoning to this, because we know this is just the same kind of thing. But the notation changes a little bit, because... It is variational calculus, not regular calculus, so you will see this kind of thing happening a little bit all over the place, but in some sense it is the same thing, so don't, don't worry too much about the kind of notation that is used. This is just standard notation in most textbooks. So we do the same. Our Lagrangian is a function of position and velocity, so that means that we are basically going to have the derivative with respect to displacement and with respect to velocity. Now, if we put this back into our original equation for the minimal, uh, for the minimum action, then we have this expression here. 
and we know by the linearity property of integrals that we can split this up into two separate integrals so basically we're going to have this one, let's call it i1 and then let's call this one i2 now what we're interested in here is basically trying to re relate these two quantities together so what we can do is we can take i2 which is the second integral and we can perform integration by parts on it so basically you'll notice that I basically changed the notation of this to this it is pretty much the same because we know that um, x dot is just the first derivative of the position so if we take an infinitesimal change in action then take the first derivative that's the same as writing this here so integration by parts f happens in the following way we're going to integrate this function first basically we're going to cancel out the the change with respect to time and then we're just going to multiply by this function leave it unchanged and then we're going to put the endpoints into the function here and then we're going to subtract the same function that we just integrated but now we're going to differentiate the other function with respect to time and he, look at what happens here so essentially what's happening here is that we're putting in these values of t into the function here and the reason these two values here are equal to zero is because the endpoints are the same and the only thing that is changing is the path that the particle is following so if we go back to this graph uh, among many of the possibilities we have these three possibilities so you notice that the two endpoints here we have endpoint one and then endpoint two somewhere here these endpoints remain fixed throughout the whole thing they don't really change, they don't really move, they don't really get displaced what, the only thing that is changing is the path itself so we can say that the change or the infinitesimal change at those points is just equal to zero because we're using that reasoning and basically by that we arrive at this expression for this integral 2 expression and now you notice that if we put the two together we arrive at this integral equation here so basically we're going to have these two things times the infinitesimal change in the position or displacement times dt and we know well how do you make an integral equal to zero well you make the argument equal to zero or the integrand equal to zero and the only way that can be zero is if this function here is equal to zero so what we find out in the end is that the one thing that is going to ensure that our action is minimized and that we're minimizing the energy required to perform that transition from state 1 to state 2 is going to be this equation right here and I think I forgot a dot here so that's very important remember this is uh, derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity and this one is with respect to displacement so we need to make that very clear this is called the Euler-Lagrange equation and this is basically the basis of every derivation that we will ever do with Lagrangian mechanics so everything pretty much starts here now there is another kind of notation that is maybe more common in textbooks and it is that instead of using x they use q so q is often called the generalized coordinate or the canonical coordinate system it simply means that we're taking some coordinate system that we're defining and then that becomes our, our coordinate q so we'll see that there are cases in which it might be convenient to write a coordinate in terms of a transform system so for example we could have something like a new coordinate system based on something like this so maybe we're subtracting some quantity and then this new variable makes it easier to handle the kind of problem we're dealing with but essentially this is the general form and it says that the only Lagrange equation is valid no matter what uh, transformation of coordinates we perform so it's a really really nice and powerful equation and basically you can imagine that this equation is only for one of the coordinates so if you have a three dimensional kind of problem you will have three of these equations and then you will have to derive it for all three equations so instead of using Newton's laws which are often just f equals to ma and then for the torque we use equal to i angular or acceleration 
we're going to use this which is going to make use of the kinetic and potential energies of the system. And in the next video I'm going to show you a comparison between using the Newtonian method and the Euler Lagrange equation or the Lagrangian method to deriving the equations of motion of a particular physical system.